Hello everyone, back at it again. And Tackle Warehouse is having a 25% off spring sale. 25% off is a pretty good discount. And I thought I'd go through a few items that caught my eye. I should say I'm not sponsored by anyone. Um, I'm not affiliated with anyone. That could be a good thing because I'm not biased in any way. I'm just telling you my own thoughts. Uh, so this is just one fisherman's thoughts. Now, normally, um, a lot of these companies, um, maybe St. Croix or Arc, they're getting into the, the real business. And I typically don't jump on those reels right away. I want to see how other people uh, review them and, and what they think of them. There's a few exceptions, and this reel could be one of them. So this is the Arc Gravity BFS casting reel. If you're not familiar, BFS stands for Bait Finesse System. It's basically just a way to cast light lures using bait casting gear instead of spinning gear. And what is different about this reel is it's really a clone of a reel called the Hybo Arise. And I'll just click on it so you get a closer look. And they've kind of um, tweaked the design at least the exterior for the American market. So it has nice um, paddle grips, padded handles, and the original, the Hybo Arise, has these post handles, and it has kind of a more muted color scheme, but the gear ratio is the same. A lot of the inner workings of the reel are the same, and I expect it to perform virtually the same. Now this is a reel that I am interested in and I think the price is competitive. The only problem is that uh, they're only available as backwater items. And my guess is this is because they're getting them shipped from either Arc or the Hybo factory where they're probably both produced in the same factory. Um, and so there's gonna be a little bit of a delay. Now, it's winter where I am, um, there's ice all around me, so the delay is not that big of a deal. Sometimes those dates can, can uh, slip a little bit, depending on where inventory is and how quickly they can get it in stock to mail it out to you. But that reel definitely has my eye, and really none of the other ARC or 13 fishing reels catch my eye. I've talked about the Shimano Corrado in earlier videos and the Tatula 100. I'm not going to stick with those for too long except to say I think they're they're both good reels uh, if it was me I would get a, a Shimano reel with the MGL spool and this isn't it so um, but but a solid reel if you need more line capacity for 65 pound braid throwing frogs or swim baits something like that that is a better option now this is the SLX MGL it's a good reel. Uh, for my money, I think I, I'd rather wait for the SLXA MGL to, to start coming into stock on Tackle Warehouse. And, you know, it's always a little bit of a game. You probably won't get the same uh, deal once that's in stock, but it has enough features that I think the performance will be closer to the Corrado 70 MGL at a cheaper price point. And so for my money, I'm willing to wait on that one. Uh, let's keep going. The Twin Power is a really nice reel. Uh, it's a little above my budget right now. I'm actually afraid that if I got one, I'd like it too, too much and I'd want to buy more of them and uh, just completely blow my fishing budget on one reel. Uh, the, the Daiwa Accelerator, the LT, this is the old version. Let me click on this. It has the, the thicker bail wire, which I like. It has a smooth transition to the line roller, which I like. Uh, the difference between this and the Daiwa Fuego is that this takes standard real oil. It's not mag sealed, so you don't have to worry about getting magnetic oil for the reel. You can just use regular Daiwa real oil, which you can get pretty much anywhere. By the way, that stuff is excellent. The, the Daiwa reel oil is, is good stuff. Um, and Daiwa reels for freshwater 
I usually like the 2500 size best. And so this is a fair price. I think around uh, Black Friday, I saw the reel a little bit cheaper, but this is a fair price for a good reel that you're not gonna be able to get with this, you know, bigger, bulky, thicker bail wire, which I like because that means it's less likely to bend. And yeah, so this model is going away and I'm strongly considering getting another one, even though I already have a couple. For the Revros, it's a fine reel, but you know, for an extra $22, I would definitely get the Accelerator. All right, um, we're not gonna even look at the Certate because again, I'm afraid I'm gonna like it too much and blow my entire fishing budget on that reel. The Stratic FL. So they've sold out of the 2500 size. I have um, the Altegra in the thousand size, uh, the, the newer version, and it's excellent. I use that for trout, panfish. It's a great little reel. Uh, for freshwater, you know, general, you know, bass fishing and freshwater. In Shimano, I like the 3000 size, but you do pay a little bit more. So you pay about whatever that is, $15, $20, $25. You pay a little bit more um, when you jump up to the 3000 size and that's because it comes with a little bit uh, bigger handle and a little bit deeper spool. Um, so you have to ask yourself, is that really worth it? And that's probably why the 2500 sold out is that there's a decent jump between the 2500 and the 3000 and if you wanted a bass reel, I think 3000 is the way to go. Now for me, I'm thinking about uh, building a Ned Rig rod and I'm trying to decide between the, the Stratic and the Acceler. Both are excellent reels. I have to decide if it's worth almost three times the price for the Stratic for a Ned Rig rod that, you know, distance isn't the primary concern, but it, but it is a much better reel and it's probably worth the extra hundred bucks or whatever it is, 90 bucks for this reel. Um, especially if you're a bank angler or anytime you need distance, the long stroke spool really does add casting distance and uh, you have uh, more even line lay and it's, uh, it's a great reel. Uh, the Regal, I kind of feel the same way about the Revros. I would just jump up to the Acceler. And uh, that's because it doesn't have as thick of a bail wire. It isn't a smooth transition to the line roller. And that means the line can get hung up in that transition. And um, it's not worth saving $6 or whatever the difference is. I would definitely get the Acceler. And I don't really have anything to say about these uh, 13 Fishing or Abu or Savage reels. So let's move on. Now a few of these um, you know, specific models are on sale and sometimes when you actually click through all the way to um, the buying process and you get an email, you find that another rod in the series that wasn't specifically discounted, you also get the discount, but it doesn't show up. It's not advertised that way. And so if you want to be sure, the best way is to email or call Tackle Warehouse to make sure you're getting the deal you think you are. I noticed a couple times over the, the sales this winter, I bought rods that weren't specifically on sale and I ended up getting the discount when I finally got the, uh, you know, my checkout receipt. Uh, let's keep going. I have to kind of pick and choose what I'm going to talk about. Otherwise we'll be here all day. I want to get to some of these Shimano rods. So the Shimano Intenza casting rod, especially around a hundred bucks. I think it's a great value anytime you don't need a ton of sensitivity. So uh, especially if you're going to go for any of the, any of the glass rods, I'm not going to, I don't know if any of them are going to show up here, but um, any of the, uh, yeah, the moderate fast rods, they call them or the, the medium moderate fast. Um, I'm not on the right 
rod. But yeah, anytime you don't need the sensitivity, so um, so like cranking or um, or some technique like that, that it's you're just you're just cranking a a, a, a crankbait in or maybe a chatterbait, something like that. And there's no doubt when you get a a bite, you know, the, the rod doubles over and you set the hook and you got them. So any technique like that where you don't need sensitivity, I think this is a great choice, especially around $100. And the only problem I've had with them is that this hook keeper has popped off uh, once or twice, I can't remember. But all I did was I ran a bead of super glue right around that, um, the, the rod handle there. And then I held it down for 30 seconds and I was good to go. And it might have popped off again. I did the same thing. But it's a 10 second fix and you're back in business. This grip down here is, is a, a tacky like a, a bike handle, like a, like a pedal bike handle. And it, it does have a good grip. Uh, this uh, handle down here I think was just EVA foam. But the, the rods that I have um, from the Shimano Intensa series have been pretty good. I've been happy with them. Other than that minor uh, hook keeper popping off. All right. Uh, so this is the the Corrado version, and it says that it's only this rod that's uh, specifically on sale, and I don't know if that's true or not. So it says this rod's on sale, the 610 Lite, which is a super light rod. This would be a BFS type rod. Um, and some of the others, they don't show up as being on sale. And I don't know for sure if that's really true or they just can't advertise it. So if you're thinking about a uh, Corrado glass rod, um, you could always email Tackle Warehouse or call them. Uh, same thing with a 7.2 medium light, but at $100, if that price is good for all the Corrado series, I would definitely go with the Corrado over the Intenza. Um, Cause yeah, that, that's a really good price, 50% off. And I don't know if they would extend that discount to the whole series. Again, you just have to ask. Uh, Zodius, 38% uh, off. And again, it's the 7.2 medium light that's highlighted. Around, it was sometime over the holidays, I ordered a 610 uh, medium heavy to use for fluke fishing and other stuff, maybe working a popper. But I want a little bit shorter rod, a little bit, um, you know, heavier power. It was a medium heavy rod. But um, what, what I got was a good discount on the rod, even though it wasn't listed as being on sale. So uh, maybe they'll, they'll do that again. Ah, we talked about this before. Uh, this is the Randall Tharp Honey Badger series. Now, these are good rods. I wouldn't say they're, they're quite on par with the Shimano rods, especially the, you know, like the Zodius, if you could get that on sale. They do run kind of thick, and you can tell just how thin the EVA, EVA cork butt is over the rod. The blank is taking up almost the whole uh, butt grip there because the rod's so thick. So they are not the lightest rods. They are not the thinnest rods. But the rod that I like, uh, it's a medium heavy, moderate fast. And this is the rod I use for chatterbaits. So again, if you, don't, if you don't care too much about having the thinnest rod or the lightest rod, for fishing chatterbaits, this is one of my favorite rods. Now, I haven't fished all of them. I haven't fished the X-Pride medium heavy glass. Uh, I haven't fished a, a bunch of others that, that might even beat it. Uh, but the other thing to know about this rod, let's see if I can get a, a close-up here. Yeah, you see this little tiny tip-top guide? It's almost that, that hole in the middle, that the tip-top, uh, I don't know, eyelet there. It's almost the same diameter as the end of the rod. And what that means is you can't run long braid-to-leader uh, connection knots through that tip top because it'll jam and it's really better with straight braid or straight fluoro 
or if you want to run braid to leader, you have to use a, a short leader, like, you know, three feet or something. You can't use six feet because it'll end up in the tip top and just cause you headaches or even break as it jams in there. So it's a good rod. It's not great, uh, but it's one of my favorite for fishing chatterbaits. And I don't know. I don't know if any of these others are going to catch my eye. We'll skip over spinning rods. I looked through the fishing line briefly. I didn't see too much that caught my eye. I've tried Vanish. Not a fan. I'll leave it at that. I fished this Trilena 100% fluorocarbon. And on sale, uh, I think it's a, a pretty good deal. It's nothing too special. Uh, but I had good luck with it. I think I used it in 17 pound tests, which is a size some other brands didn't offer. And, and I, I liked it. I mostly used it as leader material until I, uh, I used it up. Uh, Abrazex and Invisex, they are expensive um, fluorocarbons. So if you really like them, now's the time to get them when they're on sale. Uh, red label is a little bit thicker, a little bit stiffer. It's still a pretty good value, I think, in fluorocarbon. Uh, but for my money, what I've gone to is Yozuri Hybrid. And I don't think you can beat it. It's not really a pure fluoro, but I use it like fluoro. It just runs a little thick. It's very strong. So a little bit of personal preference there. Fireline Crystal. I use this stuff for ice fishing mostly, and that's because I don't like the noise it makes going through my guides. It's very loud. If you can get over the noise, um, it's, it's okay. Uh, but it is very tough, strong for its diameter, and I specifically like crystal. And I use, again, I use that ice fishing. Uh, I used to use, when it first came out, this was... I mean, I, at the time, I think it was just Power Pro and Fireline. And I would use Fireline drop shotting with a, with a swivel to a floral leader and then a drop shot hook and a weight. And I did great with that. I thought, um, you know, for techniques where you're just fishing over the side of the boat or, or making short casts, drop shotting, I thought it was, it was great for that. But what I don't really like is casting it in the, in the noise it makes through the guides. And it, it takes probably three months of fishing to break it in. And it'll change from this darker gray color to a light gray as that line gets broken in and uh, the coating kind of wears off. And then it's a little bit better. But it, it can be a little wiry uh, when you, we first get it out of the package and start fishing it. X5 braid, I did not have good luck with, but I really like X9 braid. Looks like it didn't get a good review here, but I used the, uh, the flame green and six pound test. That's the only um, color that's available in six pound test. And I use that for panfish mostly. And uh, it does fray a little bit. It's only six pound braid, but it's very strong. And uh, I like the bright uh, I, I would call that yellow, but they call it flame green. But I like the bright yellow color. It helps with bite detection with panfish. And I use that in open water. I use that with float rigs. I use it fishing um, the Z-Man uh, micro baits, the shad fries, and a few others, the larvas. And I really like that line, especially on sale. And uh, I pretty much only fish the yellow color uh, in six pound test. X9, I really like it. I use it, oh my gosh, goodness. I use 8 pound to 50 pound. I think I have a rod with uh, 65 pound on it. And this is probably my favorite braid right now. It's uh, smooth. It's slick. It's quiet through the guides. It's very strong. Yeah, I, I use it on probably 90% of my reels right now. So if that means anything, uh, you can kind of get a feel for how much I like it. It's really replaced almost all the other uh, line that I used to use, all the other braid anyway. Big game I mentioned in a previous video, uh, especially on sale. I use this for uh, backing material. I think in the eight pound spool, you get something like 1700 yards, which is a ridiculous amount of line for 
eight dollars or anything in that less than ten dollar price price range excuse me uh trilene excel is kind of the old standard uh it's been around forever but it's still good they make small improvements to it every couple of years uh, same with xt all three of these are excellent lines and i've used all of them extensively i mostly use big game for backing and leader material for salt water or um, bottom fishing rigs that kind of stuff in heavier pound tests so like the 20 pound test you can use you know inshore stripers uh, bottom rigs for black sea bass scup uh, tog maybe you want a little bit more pound test for tog but i use uh 20 pound leader material and uh i do great with it and it takes me forever to go through a, a full spool and it looks like uh, I think they do it by weight, but the 20 pound only has 660 yards. I say only, but that's still a ton of line. I mean, you compare it to this, there's only, there's uh, about double the amount of line with big game as you get with Trilene XL. I guess in some cases the price is double too, but uh, you get a ton of line and it lasts a really long time. It's very, very strong. It does have quite a bit of stretch, which I think helps the, the strength before it breaks. Uh, but very good line, I think, anyway. Stren is, I didn't talk about it, but Stren, to me, is very comparable. Well, I guess it's kind of in between Trilene XL and XT. Uh, that's how I kind of think of it and how I use it. Um, I mostly use XL now um, over Stren. It's just kind of personal preference, but both are very good lines. Been around forever. Stood the test of time. We can go through a few of these. I don't want to get bogged down too much. Wanted to highlight a couple. It's going to take me a second to find them. The fat. No, that's the fat Senko. I was looking for the Ned Senko. Maybe it's around here somewhere. This one. The Ned Senko, especially in the... The electric shad color, anytime you're around um, uh, herring or uh, it even kind of looks a little bit like a bluegill. That's the only color I really like in this series, um, but they eat it. They eat it pretty well. It's not the most durable Ned bait. Uh, it's good for a few fish if you glue it to the jig head. I wouldn't use it uh, rigged weedless or anything like that. I, would, I only fish it with an open hook and that's because of durability. Uh, but fish really do eat it and sometimes if they're on a really fussy bite and they turn up their noses at some more durable baits like a, like a Z-Man Ned Rig, they'd be surprised if you put this on and start catching fish. Uh, but I've done it a few times and I always carry a pack with me when it's Ned Rigging season. Shad Shaped Worm, this is an old standby for uh, drop shot fishing and it still works just like it used to. They are not the most durable baits at all. So if I'm going to fish this bait, what I like to do is tie on a little keeper. And I did a video on this before on, um, I think, how to improve any hook, uh, fishing hook hack, something like that. But put a little keeper on your hook and run the drop shot hook through the bait, not just nose hooking it. Because if you nose hook it, you know, you're going to go through a ton of these baits and at a certain point it's just littering and, and I don't like littering so if you're going to fish this bait I'd run the, the hook through the bait put a keeper on that hook or get an owner hook with a, a built-in keeper and you'll be good to go Yamatanuki these are one of these uh, I forget what they call them poop style baits uh, dead action baits I tried this and I have to give it a little bit more time this year, but I wasn't getting the greatest hookup and they weren't that durable. I did catch a few fish on it, but it wasn't like a Ned rig where, um, you know, it's kind of instant. They pick it up, you, you lean back and you got them. With this, I really had to set the hook to get through all that plastic, even though it's very soft. And um, it wasn't it wasn't like I was getting the greatest hookup. I think I need a different hook for this style of bait and then I'll be in business. Uh, I was setting pretty hard and I still wasn't uh, 
getting as many fish in the boat as I thought I should. And let's see. It's a bunch of baits here, but I can't go through all of them. There's a couple more I wanted to highlight if I could just find them. There's so many baits and they kind of separate them by color, which makes it take up the whole page instead of just having one bait with a bunch of different colors. And the Z-Man Pro Cross. Yeah, so um, this is a good bait. It is very, very buoyant though, and you almost need enough weight to kind of pin it down. So let's say uh, this could be an advantage for you though. So say you wanted to you wanted to fish a heavier jig, but you didn't want it to fall as fast. If you put one of these Z-Man Pro Cross on it, it'll slow the fall rate. It doesn't really have any action, so you have to shake the jig to get uh, any action out of it. But those claws will, ra will rise right up, and then when you when you jiggle it or wiggle it, the claws will kind of undulate in the water and kind of wave at the fish. And uh, it's a very durable bait, like all Z-Man uh, baits. I like this color too. Could be kind of a bluegill type color or a crawfish. A lot of the crawfish around me, they have a pale belly with a little bit of blue on them and they have a little bit of an orange tip sometimes I'll even take a marker an orange marker and and uh, color the tips with a little bit of orange just like the crawfish in my waters and sometimes that can get you a few more bites if the fish are being difficult which with so many people on the water now I'm running into more and more difficult fish every year I have to break out new tricks all right um, the Yamamoto D Shad. So these are very similar to um, to the Strike King Caffeine Shad, uh, both in design and action. Uh, um, the D Shad is even a little bit more delicate. So they don't last very long, but they have a nice uh, shimmy on the fall. You can work them fast or slow, just like the Caffeine Shad, and they have a couple good colors. I mean, that to me has smallmouth written all over it. I like this green gizzard color. To me, it looks kind of like a herring. So at this price, I think it's probably worthwhile, but just know that they're not very durable. The Yum Houdini Shad, um, they're okay. The ones that I got, um, they they weren't packaged very well and a, a bunch of them were kind of twisted and, and not usable. Let me just click on this. But it has this kind of paddle tail, but you can, um, you it has, I don't know, these perforations where you can cut away material, you can make it into a, a V-tail, or you can keep the paddle tail. I usually just keep it whole as the paddle tail, and it has kind of a nice uh, shimmy on the fall with that paddle tail there. They are a little bit bigger than, um, I don't know, like a, they feel bigger to me than a fluke. Maybe that's just in, in my head. Uh, the color I was fishing was Arkansas Shiner. But like I said, about half of them were twisted in the bag and, and they, they were kind of bent up. But at this price, at $2.62, you can deal with a few that aren't quite perfect and um, just fish the ones that are good. Z-Man Goat Twin Tail. There are three sizes and there's a micro goat too um, that could be good for panfish. But I use this and there's a bunch of colors and new colors too. But I mostly use this in Green Pumpkin. Uh, I kind of keep it pretty basic. It's a very durable bait. And I use this Texas rigged. And when I wear out one side, which takes a while, I just flip it over and I fish the other side. I mostly fish uh, the 3.75 inch size. And this is a great bait. Uh, you know, say you're you're catching fish on a frog and, and one misses the frog. Well, this is a great bait to throw as a follow-up bait. Or you're fishing a frog and your frog bite dies. You can 
switch to this and start flipping the weed edge or or tossing it in holes in pockets or or or, uh, or stuff like that in the weeds and um, yeah I've caught I don't know how many fish on this and it's a very versatile bait especially in those kind of uh, mono colors because you can you can uh, you can fish it um, you know one side and then flip it over but you can also fish it horizontally or vertically on the back of a, a chatterbait so if it's kind of one color like this pearl color and you're around I don't know shad or herring or something and you want to imitate a shad you can keep this uh, bait like it's like it's set up here so it's oriented vertically so that these two kicker feet act like uh, like a tail fin almost or you could pick one of these colors which is more two-tone and have the belly be the blue blue side and the top be the browner side and you can fish it flat and imitate a craw with a chatterbait or, or fish a Texas rigged or however you like. So at this price and for all the colors and the different sizes, I think it's a great value. It's a very versatile bait. It's very durable. You can catch a lot of fish on one bait, especially if you get uh, you know those kind of single tone colors and flip them around or reverse them. Uh, yeah, nothing but good things to say about the Z-Man goat. I didn't see too much in here that caught my eye. Uh, I did, oh, well, I'll go through a few of these. So the Zayco, I use this as a chatterbait tail, trailer, and it's a great bait. It has a lot of good colors, but they aren't very durable. So if you're around, say, pickerel or small bass, they will uh, rip the tail off these things pretty quickly. A big bass will have no trouble, just eat the whole thing, and uh, the bait will last a little bit longer. But um, yeah, compared to Z-Man baits, they're, they're just not very durable. They do work though. Uh, the TRD Gobies, uh, to me, this is a perfect bait for like a, a little weedless uh, football head, like a Ned weedless football head. So that's how I have it rigged up, but I haven't fished it really enough. Uh, but by the time I got them in, it was almost, ice was almost here and <laughs> I just haven't had a chance to fish it that much, but I think it's going to work pretty well. Even where, where places uh, you don't have gobies, um, it kind of looks like a bullhead or a sculpin. And a lot of the fish I catch around me, they have bullheads in their throats. And a lot of people don't think about bullhead as a, a forage source for, for big bass, but uh, they do eat them. And I, I, they have little spines on the, the side of their, their, their heads, their necks, I guess. And maybe they get stuck in their throat, but uh, they still eat them. And I see a lot of bass with uh, blue bullhead tails sticking out of their throat. The gobius is, is kind of Z-Man's take on the dark sleeper. I also picked up one of this, one of these guys, but I, uh, I haven't really had a chance to fish it. So... Uh, have to wait for a review on that. But it should be a lot more durable. A lot of the dark sleepers, I get the, the tail ripped off and then the bait's useless. So I'm looking forward to fishing the gobius. And if it's, you know, 90% as good as the dark sleeper and the tail stays in place, I will be a happy camper. Uh, the power bait grass pig. I used to fish this bait when it was in the Havoc series. Uh, some of these printed colors, they have kind of a strong odor, which, which I don't like. Uh, but you can buy them and, uh, you know, set them out to the side with the bag open and let them kind of off gas for a few months. And they don't stink as badly. Power bait, power stinger. I bought these uh, to try and I haven't really got a chance to fish them yet. But it's one of those baits I'm, I'm looking forward to trying. It's, it's very... Uh, to me, it's very similar to the, the Zayco, same kind of idea, same kind of profile, but it has this kind of honeycomb section in the tail, which uh, I believe is a Japanese innovation, which uh, Berkeley kind of borrowed, and it's supposed to provide more natural movement. So I'm looking forward to trying it, but I haven't actually fished it yet. The Kickin' Zayco, uh, some people like this as a, as a chatterbait trailer. 
I typically don't use the paddle tails with chatterbaits because a lot of times that paddle tail will be out of sync with the rhythm that the that the chatterbait blade is kicking to and you'll have like the paddle tail fighting the chatterbait which I don't like but I know that some people do like that uh, they aren't very durable and if a small bass or perch or pickerel or something gets a hold of this tail that's goodbye to the kick and zako Uh, Gambler Easy Vibes, and I think there's an Easy Shad too. I fished the Easy, yeah, the Big Easy. I fished these baits before. I don't fish them as much as I should, but um, but I've had pretty good luck with them. Ah, the River to Sea S Waver. Uh, I think it's this, only that color that's for sale. But I did pick up that uh, that phantom trout color. It's sort of like a, a clear bait with a little bit of a moss sheen to it and some pepper flakes and then this purplish pink belly. It's kind of an odd color, but to me it looked like a good color for clear water and that's why I got it. And I haven't even put it in the water yet to, to see how it fishes. I have a bunch of other colors though. Um, you know, the Cali Hitch looks like a pretty good color. Uh, Ghost Minnow. Now, sometimes it's hard to tell online, but I think that color is going to look pretty good in the water. Uh, Lit Shad. Again, I think it'll look better in the water th than it does online. But uh, they have a bunch of new colors that are worth checking out. Yeah, let's move on. See if I can, if anything catches my eye here. I don't remember too much in top water. Oh, the 3DR pencil. They're still trying to sell these things. These are good baits. Um, they're very similar to the 3DS series. Cast well, walk well. They don't come with a split ring on the nose. So you can either add one or, or add a loop. Uh, this, this Piku Piku, I'm not even sure how to say it, but this is a twitch bait you fish on top of the water. What, what's kept me from fishing it though is it weighs one tenth of an ounce. That's about the same weight as the smallest Swedish pimple or Castmaster. And uh, it's, it's just because of the shape. I just don't think I'm going to be able to cast that bait very far. Uh, and I think it's going to catch the wind and spin. So I just haven't uh, thrown it and I don't have any plans to. Uh, the KBD Hard Knock, that's a newer bait. Uh, they have the Silent, kind of an old standby. These baits have been around for a long time. I guess it's kind of a knockoff of the, uh, the Lucky Craft 1.5. But uh, they're pretty good baits in their own, on their own, and they have a ton of colors. The, the Jabberjaw, I've mentioned before, especially at this price, $3.92. That's a ridiculous bargain. Um, and they work uh, it's if the the fish are, are kind of on um, on a chatterbait bite but they're short striking and you can't seem to get them even adding a trailer hook or uh, downsizing if you put on one of these baits it's if they take a swing at it at all they're going to get some hooks and and um, on the right day this can really save the day especially for four dollars I'm afraid they're going to be discontinuing that, which will be a shame. So I will probably pick up more of those myself, even though I don't need them, because I think that's the way they're going, is to discontinue them. The Booyah One Knocker Lipless. This was a, a great bait. Uh, they changed some of the colors. It's still a great bait. It's very similar to the original, uh, but some of the colors are a little bit different. They have a Rayburn Red. Um, yeah, I have a few of these and, and I like them. I like the one knocker uh, noise that they make more than the, just all the BBs in a rattle trap or something like that. Uh, BDS-1 is on sale. And sometimes these, these uh, Lucky Craft BDS-1s, they don't go on sale 
too often and there's more colors they used to be just I don't know three or four colors and now they've got a whole palette of colors they've got some shad colors they've got craw colors they've got all kinds of stuff now so if you're in the market for a BDS one on sale there's a bunch of those and yeah I I'm don't want to go through frogs or spinner baits or jigs right now. I think we've covered some of that in a previous video, and uh, my mind's really not not in that mode yet. I, I think I'll, I'll wait uh, to get some of those those baits until a little bit later on in the spring. So I hope this was helpful. I mean, I could go on with these other three, but I think the video will be an hour long, and I don't want to have an hour long video. So thank you all for watching. I hope this was helpful. I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.